Back at the orphanage, Tootie was sweeping the floor when a phone on a nearby table started ringing. Tootie put the broom to the side and answered the phone. Hello? Noodle! Guys, it's Noodle! Murdoch and Russell stopped what they were doing and ran to where Tootie was. Really? What's she saying? And can you ask her if she's doing well? She says that Mr. Woolbucks is going to help look for Annie's parents and they're going to make an announcement on the radio tonight. The radio? Wow, this is awesome! Come on, Russ, let's go tell the orphans. Yeah, and we'll be sure to tune in tonight for that. Okay, can't wait to hear it. And with that, Tootie hung up the phone. Annie's going to be on the radio? And it looks like Murdoch and Russell already told them. And boy, are those little kiddos so lucky to have a friend like Annie. And us too. At the studio where the radio show they were on took place, Annie sang maybe on the Burt Harley show. Noodle and Warbuck sat in some chairs with other people in the studio as they watched Annie sing. Won't you please come get your baby? Maybe. Once Annie finished the song, everyone clapped. And that was our little orphan Annie singing her heart out for the folks she hopes will find her. Now, Mr. Oliver Warbucks has a big announcement. Thank you, Bert. Tonight, I'm here to help Annie find her parents and offering $500 to the couple who can prove they are her parents. And this program is brought to you by... Wait a minute! I didn't agree to do a commercial! But before Warbucks can continue his rant, Noodle and Annie pushed him out of the room. That's right, folks. So, Annie's parents, if you're listening, then stop by Oliver Warbucks' mansion where you will be given $500. And now, for all the hours of Smiles family, this is Bert Healy saying, Hey, Hobo Man, hey, Dapper Dan, you both got your style, but brother, you're never fully dressed without a smile. Who cares what they're wearing? On Main Street of Talville Row. It's what you wear from ear to ear and not from head to toe that matters. Meanwhile, at the orphanage, the gorillas and the orphans were listening to the radio. I can't believe Annie's on the radio. I wish I was on the radio. Me too. You heard that, guys? They want to be on the radio. Yes, and what if we made that work? Do you mean in a imaginative way or having them break into an actual radio station? If it's an imaginative, then I agree. Well, it wasn't going to be imaginative, but... Either while the orphans danced to the song, Russell and Murdoch came in. Hey kids, you say you wish you were on the radio, right? Yeah! Well, what if we told you we can get you on the radio, right Dee? 2D then came out holding a stick like it was a microphone. So, for all the hours of Smiles Family, this is Bert Healy saying, Hey, Hobo Man, hey, Dapper Dan, you both got a style, but for all the God never fully dressed without a smile. Who cares what they're wearing on Main Street of Salville Row? It's what you wear from ear to ear. And not from head to toe, that matters. Ah, uh, the lovely boy and sisters, do 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 do, sinner, so janitor, so long for a while, but brother, you're never fully dressed. Though you may wear a vest, you're never fully dressed without a mouth. After they finished the song, the orphans started to laugh. That was good, girls. Just then, Miss Hag emerged into the room. What is going on in here? Uh-oh, drunken hag alert. Annie was on the radio. Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Five hundred dollars. I can't believe that brat. Hey, don't be so grumpy. Yeah, you drunken bee. Everyone gasped at what Molly said. Oh, no, I should have known one of them would bring that back. What did you call me? A drunk? But before she could finish, Murdoch covered her mouth. Ha ha, kids, you gotta love them. I don't. Now what were you about to say, Molly? Molly was about to call you a drunken bee, which is what Murdoch also calls you. Oh, great. Thanks for calling me out, kid. Girls, go to bed. And blue hair, chocolate guy, put them to bed. Oh, I know it's the 30s, but I really wish she would stop calling me chocolate guy. And as for you, British boy, I got something for you. Okay, what is it? This. Hannigan then took out a ruler, but Murdoch was not impressed. 
Really, lady? I'm 56 years old. Are you really going to whack me with that? Oh, I'm not just going to whack you. I'm going to do something way worse. Okay, go ahead. I've gotten beaten up by my half-brother, all the kids in school, and even got into a fight with a cellmate in jail. So go ahead, do your worst. Murdoch got down on the ground and Hannigan got ready to whack, but little did Murdoch know what Hannigan was going to do was a lot worse than what he thought. Meanwhile, Russell and Tootie were tucking the girls into bed. Sweet dreams, kiddos. Just then, Murdoch came into the room with a horrified look on his face. Hey, Murdoch. Daddy? Murdoch? Are you okay? Daddy, please, I've been a good boy. Uh-oh, I think Hannigan did something not good. Daddy, why don't you love me? Muds, don't hurt me! Later, Murdoch lay down on the couch while Russell comforted him. And then she, she... It's okay, you don't have to say it. I felt like I was five years old again. Shh, it's okay. You're safe now. It won't happen again. Just then there was a knock at the door. Hey, Brits, get the door. I'll get it. Tootie opened the door where standing outside was a couple consisting of a man and a woman. Excuse me, is this the orphanage? Yes, what can I do for you nice people? We've come to get our little girl who we left here years ago. Oh, okay, come on in. Miss Hankins' office is right across the hall. Why, thank you, young man. Tootie didn't let the couple in. Oh, Dee, who are those people? Just a couple saying they come to get that little girl. They've left here years ago. Uh, Dee, doesn't that seem a little suspicious? No, but they seem nice. Let's see for ourselves. Murdoch peeked through the door where the couple was talking to Miss Hannigan. We're Ralph and Shirley Mudge. And our daughter's name is Annie. Hey, looks like that radio broadcast work. Then why are they not Warbuckses? You're Annie's parents? Yes. Oh, we've waited years to see our baby again. Yes, and this is how we fool them. What? What? Huh? What are you? Then Ralph removed his mustache, where Ralph was actually Rooster in disguise, and Shirley was actually Lily. Catch us this. Huh, no wonder she called me young man. What? Well, that's what she called me the other day when they were here. Guys, listen. Oh, just think, sis, with these disguises we could pass off as Annie's parents. Then we'll get the money. Well, if I'm going to help, then I want half of it. You got it, sis. Oh, no, this is bad. So, what do we do? Well, I think we should keep a close eye on them while Noodle continues to keep an eye on Annie. You sure? Yes, or maybe if we're lucky, they'll get caught. Let's hope.